Hello everyone, my name is Brewcrick, and welcome back to Star Citizen. Oh, hello there. Today, today we're going to look for a ship, or start exploring different ships that are going to be my daily driver. I'm, I'm obsessed with finding a ship that is home, that is my own, and I probably never will because I'm obsessed with ships. But this is a first look, for me anyway, at a ship that might just meet that category. And I think it gets dismissed by a lot of people. Today we're taking a first look, mini deep dive, at the Drake Cutlass Black. Yes, definitely one you might want to put back into your hangar, even if you're a veteran player. Let's explore! Isn't it just absolutely beautiful, Star Citizen? I make uh, no apologies for uh, commenting on its uh, just mad its mad majesticness. I was going to say majesty, but I couldn't get the word out. But yes, it, it is just visually stunning. And I will continually say that as it continues to be stunning. The weather is starting to get choppy again, which is a bit of a pain as we start our walk around of this ship. But a lot of you have probably seen the title of this video or just seen the opening and thought, what in hell is Brew talking about? It's a cutlass. We fight them all the time in our bounties. They get absolutely exploded all the time. How could this thing possibly even be a daily driver? Go straight to the uh, Constellation series. Go, go, You've got heavy fighters. You've got light fighters that have beds and internal space and all sorts of stuff. Yes, yes, and yes to that. But what I'm... Oh, now we're looking good. What I'm starting to discover... Damn you, Snow. What I'm starting to discover with this game is that the amount of ships on display, if you just go for the meta, not that we pole got in the way, if you just go for the meta build of this game, well, fair play to you. Maybe you want to be in the very, very best of the best. I think the meta is going to get blurred as more and more ships come out, as more balances are done. It's going to be a lot down to pilot skills, so on and so forth. But if you just go for the meta, you might be bored. I know I would be. I'm up for trying the unorthodox ships. I'm up for trying the ships that you don't really see that often. Um, I'm up for trying ships and flying ships because I like the feel of them. I like the look of them. I like their their fantasy, the you know the the immersive aspect of them in this big space simulation uh, game that we're all playing. And for a long time, I've wanted to fly the Drake Cutlass Black and never actually got an opportunity. I just didn't rent one. I, I flew a good friend's uh, Drake as a gunner, and I really enjoyed the gunner. We were wrecking stuff in the Ninetales event back at Christmas uh, time last year. So, let's talk a little bit about the Drake. So it is a bit infamous as the ship you want to stay in as least amount of time as possible in the move up to some of those ships I was talking about, namely the, the Constellation series. And the Constellation series, the Andromeda has more internal space, can hold more cargo, has more multi-crew because it's got more turrets, has better shielding, better hull HP, has bigger guns. Um, but it's also a bit sluggish. I want a solo ship that can do a bit of everything. Um, and that I can sort of move it around a bit. I, I've been spoiled by little ships now. I, I do like big ships, and I will fly big ships, but I want a ship that can sort of move. Um, this thing definitely isn't fast compared to, like, fighters, but it's not meant to be a fighter. So as we're walking around it here, let's talk a little bit. Now, I have upgraded this, so be mindful of that. And for me, I needed to upgrade it before we took it on for a bit of a review and, and see how it played. So for me, I want a ship that can fight NPCs. I'm not a PvP pilot. Uh, the most I do is, is run away or, as I was told last night, that I'm shit by the very um, fabulous, wonderful PvP pilots uh, that exist. Now, I know there's a lot of honorable, decent PvPers among you. But yeah, meeting toxic players, uh, it's just not very nice. But yeah, so I was told I'm shit, and I agree with that assessment, I am. But I uh, fight against the computer, the NPC uh, players. Um, and the first time I took this out as a little test before doing this video, I got wrecked. I was in the heavy atmosphere of Hurston and got destroyed. Um, 
my mistake, taking this thing into a heavy atmosphere fight is not a good idea. Uh, and also, um, not picking off the smaller ships. They just cut me apart, took my shields down. We're going to have a look at that as part of this first look deep dive. Um, but this ship can fight. I've tested it. It'll fight for me against the gameplay loops that I do. I need something that if I have another crew member, they can actually do something. So I was thinking about, you know, like the Banu and things like that. Uh, it's got an interior space. I need an interior space. I like to walk around my ships. Um, but the Banu has an interior space, but, the, you know, the, the other players don't really have anything to do. In this ship, there's a turret, so there's something for them to do. And a, a decent turret in that it's uh, got size 3 weapons. And a good uh, overall view for the turret gunner uh, in combat. I also want to be able to put vehicles inside uh, my ships. Because for bunkers and things like that, I like the gameplay of instead of hiding from the turrets, you land a little bit out um, and you drive your vehicle to the uh, bunker safely, avoiding the turrets. I kind of like that little gameplay loop. So it needs to have a vehicle in it. It needs to be somewhat survivable. It can't be too brittle. Um, size 2 shield on this ship. Hull HP isn't the best. But if you're careful, it can take a few knocks. Uh, it needs to fight. It needs to have firepower. So it comes with stock. Uh, two laser repeater size 2 and two Gatlings uh, gimbaled. I've upgraded them all to fixed size 3 laser repeaters. Uh, and this thing can move about enough to get those fixed size 3 weapons. Uh, four of them on target. So those are sorts of the things that I want. Oh, it needs to be able to get around the system. I've also upgraded the drive to an XL1 drive. Uh, a very fast drive. And this can get across the entire system really, really quickly. You can do Hurston to Crusader in under three minutes, which is very impressive. So that's the upgrades I've done. I've upgraded the weapons and the drive. And I've put this sort of, what I think, sick uh, paint scheme on. You can't really see it in the snow, but we'll see it when we get into the ship. And those are the sorts of things I want a daily driver to do. And the Drake Cutlass does it. The other thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to look sci-fi spacey i want that firefly type of grungy aesthetic every now and again yes i like my origin ships i make no complaint about that um but i kind of like my firefly ships i kind of like you know i like the scrappy looking ships uh the grungy looking ships the sci-fi and this ship does that the engines alone do that now i'm not too fussed about these little wing things here because they don't even like do anything they don't have any landing struts so if it was me i would chop those side bits off right so oh, i'm getting covered in snow chop these side bits off and i think it would be very cool so that's the thing that's always annoyed me about the cutlass is these wee side wings the engines are one of the best looking in the game in my opinion if you like that aesthetic very very cool um of course, you've got things like the steel that make those side doors a bit more functional because you've got guns popping out with them. But, you know, this ship costs in-game 1.38 million. So round it up, 1.4 million in-game. About 100 bucks on the store. There are better ships for that money. But again, to the point I was making at the start of this video, you're getting this ship because you maybe want to try something a little bit different. And this is what I'm here to do for you in this video is to go through it in detail and see if you want to try it out. You can rent it as well, reasonably cheap. So there's that. But yeah, I just I'm loving the detail. Like these little buttons as well. It's not just some sort of like unresponsive feeling panel. Like a ship with a ramp. Stairs, not so good for me. So let's change our camera up here so we can get a look at my popsicle self. See, see what we have when we go in here. Now, there's all sorts of uh, historic bugs and things with this ship, I've been told, where the ramp can kill you and all sorts of madness. So, you never know if we come across that in this video, I will report on it. But initially, when I'm talking sci-fi and grunge, when we get in here, the ship has it all. The exposed cabling at the top and the girders. The spaceshipy consoles and panels. We've got... Oh, whoops. We've got seats here that do work, and I'm just realizing that right now. And I didn't know you could actually do this. <laughs> I've been in the Cutlass a few times, 
Uh, oh, my camera is going to... Hey, I didn't know this. Did you guys know this? I did not know this. Well, there you go. We've got six more seats back here. The other thing I want my ship to have is I love the immersion of bed logging, right? My ship needs to have a bed. It, it just does. I, I want to be able to just park myself behind an asteroid and an orbital marker. Um, oh, hang on. Let me reset the camera for you guys. There we go. Uh, and get that immersive experience. I wake up the next day and continue on whatever it was I was doing. Look at that back ramp as well with the detail. Very, very cool. I need to say again for the record, sorry, I was just fixing my camera, that of course this isn't the best ship in the game. Of course not. There are better ships. But is this ship worth flying? I think so. We're going to explore that together in more detail. I'm just sort of bringing you up here in terms of the ceiling camera. It's got loads of space in it. We're going to put vehicles and everything in it. We're going to fly it over to Daymar and put some vehicles on it. Those side panels, you know, of course, they allow you to jump out quickly. It's, they're more functional on the steel. They don't really make too much sense here, except that you can get out quickly. It would be nice to have a kind of a ladder system there so you don't have to open the back panel. But I get it. You can hop off very, very quickly. If we take a look at some of the detailing then, component housing, which you can't access just yet. Again, those seats are awesome. Big, chunky button uh, which just feels tactile. I like that. More cabling, exposed wires, insulation perhaps, or something like that. The aesthetic is really nice in this ship. And these are nice big buttons for the side doors. And you can actually jump out safely. We'll do that later when we land in Daymar. Other than that, though, there isn't much overall purpose to the side doors. And it's mirrored on the other side. Again, that's probably more component housing, potentially, in the future. I think they could probably do something with this little area back here. Then we get into where all the action happens. So as we first step through here... Sorry, the camera does that now when we, when we swap back. Uh, we have storage of some kind. Of course, the ship has its own internal storage. Decided to freak out there for a second. This is the turret uh, gunner seat, which we will try in a minute. It's got two beds, so that ticks that box for me personally, which is good. And we, I believe this is uh, gun storage, potentially. If we find a gun, we'll try it out. I don't have any on me. And then we've also got this really fantastic... Again, for this aesthetic, don't forget, this isn't a shiny, pretty, polished ship. Look, look, look at this down here. It's exposed cabling and stuff coming up out of the floor. This is a... Sci-fi ship. In terms of, when I say sci-fi, things like the Nostromo-type ship, the Aliens-type ships. You know, drop ships. All the exposed stuff. It's rough and ready. This is fantastic. I talk a lot about MFDs and cockpits. We'll, we'll do the cockpit deep dive in a minute. I think I'll probably this is probably just going to be a deep dive as opposed to a first look. Let's go into the turret seat. I can love all the exposed piping and everything. It's very cool. Now, we are in an armatist zone, so let's see if we can power up the uh, weapon systems. Just so we can show you the clipper mines. A while since I've been in this, as I said last Christmas. Um, where is the power button? Down here. There we go. A little switch. Look at that. Two hundred and one rounds on your. Um, there's the gyro on there now. Two hundred and one rounds on on your on two. So four hundred and two rounds of size three goodness. The turret itself is responsive good view across the whole top of the ship 360 degrees movement so a good place to be as a gunner a turret operator and here we are here somewhat through the snow i'll give you a good look at it once we get onto daymar uh, i've fought a few fights <laughs> in this turret as i said earlier and it is an enjoyable experience the struts don't feel too obtrusive 
But I'm liking the details. You can see there with the piping and the cabling. It's quite nice and immersive. Rough and ready. Rough and ready. So that's the turret gunner. Your friends or, or other members of your group are going to absolutely have fun in there. And having that turret operated will mean if you're doing very high risk bounties, which we'll do a brief one as always to finish off a deep dive, because that's one of my gameplay loops. Um, they will absolutely shred those uh, bounty missions. And again, we've got our two bunk beds over there as well. So that's the exterior interior walkthrough. We've talked about the statistics, but just again for one time, uh, we have a one size two shield. I've upgraded the quantum drive, size two quantum drive to the XL1, which will take us across Stanton, no problem at all. If I show you that. So we are here in Crusader. We can go up to Microtech. Uh, we'll need to refuel. We won't be able to get there and back. But it'll do that trip very, very quickly. We can get to Crusader multiple trips. Probably two round trips. And as I said, it'll do it in less than three minutes. Uh, I've upgraded the weapons so they're all fixed size four. Size four? Fixed size three laser repeaters, Panthers. So four of them. Turret has two size three laser repeaters as we talked about uh, i haven't upgraded the shield i haven't upgraded any of the coolers or anything so that comes as stock let's talk about the cockpit this is just amazing you could just leave it as it is if we didn't have a comms bug and you have everything you need get in ready to play what i do is i change the heat system over here to the comms that stops the comms bug and over here, I just put all the uh, repeaters onto the one weapons group. And then I might throw up a second shield indicator here, just if my eye line's bouncing around. This is kind of what I do, but you could just step in and get your MFD set up by default. And this is the thing that they still have yet to figure out, saving MFD setups. It's a little thing, but some pilots like ships where they can just jump into the seat and... Um, and they have their MFD set up ready to go. No buttons that really I can see. There's an open and exterior button, but I've got that key bound. Something behind the stick here. Power on and off. So it could do with a bit of a pass for more functionality. Sort of got these rusted uh, struts. But your direct view here is quite nice. We do end up on a lag pit, which I'm using shooting or looking into our console. We talked about that with the Anvil Hawk. But that's okay, and you'll see that when we get into a fight. And here she is. This is with the uh, paint skin I bought on it. So it looks, I think, really nice with the skin. But even the default uh, ship looks nice as well. Just chop those little wings off at the front, I think. We, or, or take the big um, vertical flaps off, even. Keep the, keep the wings extending out, but take those vertical flappy things off. I think it would look nice. I don't know, I just, yeah, you, you're you probably thinking I'm mad, you know, this is the, a cutlass, what are you talking about, but I think this ship is, is worth your consideration if you are looking for some of the things I've looked at. Let's get off this planet, because we're losing we're losing the visuals. Um, I will do the atmospheric review there, because we'll be able to see the ship better. So I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, so here we are back, flying nudging our little drake cutlass into the sunrise as you can see lighting up the hull but it looks good i know a lot of you are going to be seriously brute it is a drake well that's why i stayed away from it from so long so many people just said it's trash it's a stepping stone until you get onto other ships i'm really enjoying it look at those missile pods at the back back there very cool so, uh, we'll, we'll look at atmospheric in just a moment, but I thought I would just show you this ship as we're entering into the, look at this, game. Into our, <laughs> into our sunrise. Uh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. So we need to get our iconic shot, don't we? That looks like it could be a pretty cool shot. It's a nice looking ship. For what it's meant to be, I suppose. It's not nice looking in terms of clean and pretty. It's 
grungy and <laughs> you could do worse I think you could maybe not much worse but <laughs> no I'm letting I'm letting I'm letting uh, old uh, stereotypes of the cutty seep in this is a, a review so you can get a true feeling for it so we're gonna head over to our court mining area so we'll just go down into the deck here and uh, talk a little bit about its performance. So top speed uh, in space and an atmosphere. So this thing is not going to be good fighting in atmosphere. Um, it's going to get you down very quickly. And for those of you who are rock miners, we'll be using the ship a lot to mine with because of the ability to store the rock quite nicely in the back. I need to get into mining, so I can't really comment on that. But atmosphere does OK, and it's got those lovely big thrusters which, if you hit K on your keyboard, just take the power off the stick. K on your keyboard. There's a sandstorm here as well. I'm not doing good with the weather here today. Look at the way those articulate. That is so cool. That's so, so cool. Very, very nice indeed. So, lovely big VTOL thrusters there for us to use. Um, rolls okay. Very little overroll for a ship that's meant to be trash or maneuverability. As you say, you're not getting much top speed in atmosphere, and this is a light atmosphere in Daymar. Lightish compared to Hurston. Um, you know, 370 or so. Oh, the altimeter is working. That's good. You can see on the right hand side. Um, visibility for this sort of maneuvering is not good. We can't see the deck at all. I don't know what happened there. I just got some sort of light bar that blinded me. So I, I, I took us off the deck. Uh, there's a mining area over there. So this is a problem for atmospheric flying. Absolutely. Now, if you've got a head tracker and stuff, though, you can look down and, oh, it no longer becomes a problem. But I'm using my F key and still trying to maintain the ship's uh, pitch and everything. So it's not ideal. But if you had a head tracker, that would be very cool to sort of keep an eye on where you are on the ground. Um, so that's something to bear in mind with. Boost is okay, but you're going to be saving your boost in a combat situation for emergencies 33 kilometers out. And that's definitely what you're going to be using the boost for. And maybe bringing the nose around for some of those more maneuverable engagements. I just think it looks so cool those engines firing off the cruise control on oh it does not look really cool I think it looks cool but that might just be me it is slow but again it's not as meant to be the fastest ship in the game you know it's not it's not a 400i that can absolutely mince it in a straight direction but the 400i is meant to be like a blockade runner uh, that's its purpose you can put the XL1 drive on the 400i as well. But its tank is twice the size, so you can do more trips. Of course, the 400i is much more expensive. Um, and the 400i is trash in combat, whereas this will be able to do um, bounty hunting VHRT solo. And I'm going to show you that at the end of the video. Nice and there's a coolly mounted the passing behind it. We take the cruise control off. So this, you see what I mean about this area, this, this panel area being a problem? So I'm just sort of having to use cheated a little bit with the um, turning the quantum on and off to get an idea of where my location is and go into this camera mode. So definitely not ideal for uh, atmospheric flying unless you've got a head tracker of some description. I don't think I've ever been here before from memory to this arc port, but it is a bit dark here unfortunately. Hopefully the sun's rising with us. Let's scroll down our limiter and let's see if we can't land this thing in a pretty cool way. So we're coming in to land. Now, for pure thematics, you're going to want to hit N and then K. So that lowers your landing gear and drops those cool uh, big struts. And then we'll just slow down our speed limiter and I'll bring it in for you. How awesome is that? <laughs> Immersive to the max. And there we go. So we've talked a little bit about its maneuverability in that... Uh, I mean, in, in atmosphere, you, you don't want to be getting into a fight. PvP, never PvP with this thing unless you're some sort of Top Gun pilot. Um, you're going to get absolutely rinsed. That's not what this ship is for. 
We're talking about it being an all-rounder. So I'll leave the door open. Hopefully no one will come and grief us. But it can happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some vehicles in it. So I will show you that now. Ah, stunning game. Absolutely stunning. And I think the light is coming this way, which is excellent. All right, back in a mo. And yes, everybody, this is what we're going to fit into our Drake Cutlass. This tiny little Drake mule. I'm in love with it. I love this little buggy. Um, preferably, you'd put something in with at least another passenger seat if you're doing sort of rescue operations at bunkers and stuff. But this little sh uh, little ship, cute little vehicle, does have an internal storage, um, which is awesome. Getting it into the bay is really straightforward. If you want to drive head first like this, it just goes in without any incident whatsoever. And because, which you may not know about the little mule, is it can turn on the spot. I'm just holding the A key, uh, kind of like a uh, tank tracks. You can get slotted in absolutely perfectly like this. And there's room for plenty more. We're gonna fit one more vehicle in here because I've got another video idea after this one. So that's the other thing I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to put vehicles inside my little solo ship and we've done that. So let me grab another vehicle and then we'll take this out into space to finish up our deep dive. So far I'm enjoying the Drake Cutlass immensely. I'll be flying it for quite a bit. All right, off we go. So you would think I was sponsored by Drake because here we're also going to pop a dragonfly into the back of our cutlass. Now I haven't flown really a dragonfly for any oop amount of time, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, we can now control the height that a hover is at, so let's see how well this is going to go down. Um, so I'm just dropping the speed limiter, in we go. Oh, well we would have a visual camera glitch there, but that looks okay. Oh. I might need to fit it in crossways. I probably could do a better job of this, but that's fine. Now, there's no way to land with these ships. I think you just cut the engine and it flops down to the ground. Oh, but it does it gently now. Okay, I definitely could have done a better job with, <laughs> with parking this. But, hey, it fits. Oh, no, sorry, that's me getting off. I sort of teleported off the thing. That's fine. Yeah, we're going to have to do a review of this dragonfly. Cause it looks sweet. Anyway, this is not about the Dragonfly, it's about the Cutlass. So I put a couple ships in here that my crew can manage. Again, if we did a better job, we could fit multiple mules. Probably another Dragonfly if I was accurate enough. Now the mule's behaving itself, the Dragonfly is jittering a bit. Hmm, we'll see. So that's another thing I needed to be able to do with my daily driver, is I wanted to be able to fit vehicles inside it. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I wanted to be able to... Oh... Hang on, I need to go get a, I need to go get the shot. Look at the sun coming across the ship's hull. Peeling across it. Fantastic. Fantastic! I'll finish my point in just a second. I want to go get a, a get a thumbnail shot for this back in a moment. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I had to get a wee thumbnail there. It looks so good here on Daymar. The other thing I was going to say is I also need a ship that lands at pads as opposed to in hangars where possible in space stations. And of course, this size of ship will always land at a pad. Just means repairing and getting away quickly, which is fantastic. Let's take it off just to show you that sort of procedure. So I'll scroll the speed limiter down so we can have a nice thematic lift off. Oh, look at that. Load in the landing gear or retract the landing gear. Look at this thing. Bit of forward momentum. Increase the speed limiter slightly. And then, of course, it's going to raise up quicker the way we've got the engines in. So we'll tap K as well. Tapping K. And then increase the forward speed. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Let's get out into space. Look at this thing. I don't know why I dismissed it for so long. I think it... There is, of course, better ships that do everything better, but do they do all of this stuff at this size class, at this price point? I, is there? Let me, like I was thinking, so we've got the Vanguard series, but you can't have vehicles inside it. There's interior space in the Banu, it's got four uh, fixed uh, size, three Panther laser repeaters. Doesn't have a turret for a second gunner. 
Uh, Freelancer would be probably one of the close ones, but the Freelancer's door is really awkward and its interior area is a bit awkward for bigger vehicles. I, you know, this is what I'm saying to you, you know. Bigger ships, of course, will do it better, but this size and weight class? I don't know. The final thing is, can it fight? And this is where everyone's going to get really angry at me, but uh, it can. It's slow, so top speed you'll see on the left is only 1113, 1130 meters per second. It's not going to outrun any fighters. You need to take them down or quantum out. Again, PvP, you're probably dead. So, uh, it's not a PvP ship. Definitely not. Not my opinion, anyway. Maybe with a turret gunner, you might, you know, if you've got a good pilot. But, yeah, uh, it doesn't work for me, PvP, that's for sure. I've never got a chance to, to play it or use it in PvP because someone just blew me up when I was in my little mule. But anyway, um, it looks fantastic. So, yeah, that's the top speed, slowing down uh, with those reverse thrusters, which we have a look, are very cool looking. Um, not so good using boost. Worse still. Do a 180 flip. Uh, let me unlock the stick. Pitching is slow, but it doesn't feel as heavy as like the likes of a constellation, and it slows down much quicker there, of course. But it rolls nice. The pitch is nice. It yaws really slow. Don't yaw with this thing, that's for sure. So, you know, it's okay, it's okay, but it is enough to fight in, and we're going to see that together now. So let me take you to a fight. I don't know where it's going to be. We'll only do one or two because this is an overall look. We will we'll probably have a dedicated VHRT video on this where we really talk tactics. But let's just finish off our deep dive with a quick look at a fight, and then we'll summarize the ship. All right, we've arrived actually at an atmospheric fight, <clears throat> excuse me, on Selen. This is where we're going to put this little ship through its paces. And again, I hear you because I'm screaming it in my own ear. Brute, use the Andromeda. This is a stepping stone. Yes, the Andromeda is better in every way, but this thing is more maneuverable. It's smaller. Um, and we have a real problem with fights at the minute with size 2 shield bugs. So we need to get behind and around vessels. Um, and the Andromeda really struggles with that. It's designed to just go nose on and wreck with those four size four uh, repeaters. Okay, uh, Jess is who we have to kill, Jess, and they are a Valkyrie. So normally what I do with the Cutlass is I actually take them into space. And I also, because this thing is no good in atmosphere, pull out any smaller fighters. Uh, we've got a Hurricane. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's pull them out into space. Now, the Cutlass is okay for getting away kind of once. You'll drink up all the boost. You'll boost in one direction. Don't try anything fancy. And you will get away safely enough. But that's about it. See, my boost is all gone. Pick one direction and get out. So we're going to approach them again and try and pull them up into space here. Uh, if you have any smaller craft, deal with them first. They're going to outmaneuver you and wreck you in a cutlass. Uh, we have size 2 shields, so I'm going to put uh, one notch of reinforcement into that front shield, so we've got a 60-40 split. You want that boost back, we're going to need that boost, if in another emergency we just need to get out of dodge. Um, we have, what's that, a hurricane, two hurricanes and Valkyrie, okay, okay, so uh, this is definitely going to put me in through my paces. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. <coughs> we have some missiles too. We'll talk about that, Bob. Uh, we have uh, four size 3 laser repeaters, uh, 42 clips uh, without full power, 52 as you can see with full power. Um, I am not a top gun pilot, so bear that in mind. But if you're like me, not so good at fighting you'll sort of get a feel for what this ship is capable of. Remember, try to avoid the yaw turning. So we roll and pitch up because that's where we're going to get the most amount of degrees of movement. Shields are not getting hit probably either from the Valkyrie's turret or the Hurricanes have engaged. But you see, just retreating a little bit for a second. It lets us deal with the primary target in peace. Normally what we would do is... Well, it's dead, so there you go. Normally what we do is we would now run away. We've got a primary target. As you'll see at the top of the screen, we've got our cache. But I want to show you a hurricane fight in 
the cutlass. Two of them, to be exact. So, again, I've just ran away to give all my, like, systems time to recharge. So, shields and boosts and all that sort of stuff. Um, keeping power on boost just to get that recharged as we're coming back in. And then a wee notch back to shields, or maybe an even power distribution, so that I'll choose instead to get those shields back up. The rear shields were 39%. The four size three fixed at 40 uh, one or 51 uh, clip size is pretty good. Now, if we didn't have size two shield bugs, we'd, we'd be wrecking here, but it's a whole new... Uh, type of tactic that we have to employ when fighting NPCs these days. It's a lot more difficult. There you go. Finally, we burst through that size two front shield deploy decoys. Just use a couple of them. I'm, I'm very heavy on decoys. This ship, you do absolutely have to roll and pitch up into the turns. The yaws, like I'm doing a little bit of yaw here, but then yeah. roll and pitch up as they pass by. Power is just holding on weapons. The hurricanes. I must admit, aren't playing aggressive. You know, this isn't a fair test. But when I do my kind of bounty hunt video in depth, we go through the tactics on. I just wanted to show you, as a part of a deep dive, like me, one of your main money makers is combat. Uh, you can't do that. So I'm just boosting away again, giving time for my shields to recharge because we're a big target. So we basically want to get out of that targeting range by our enemy to give those shields time to recharge. Power back to boost, and then we'll re engage. Start throwing the shots off. On the paper, I think it's 1,800 meters. Realistically, I start firing them off around 1,400. Um, this is a fixed lag pip. We can't go gimbal because I've upgraded all the weapons to uh, fixed size three, as we discussed earlier. Once that uh, front shield isn't an issue, see it is there. So there's no way that shield should be holding. Uh, you can actually get the hurricanes down quite quickly. And this one's aggressive. This has been that's even a phrase, has been nerfed. It's, it's not shooting at me in that turret really at all. Probably because the turret's under the... No, the turret was on that side. So it's not shooting at me. Yeah, this isn't a fair test at all, but I'll just show you that, you know, we can... We can take it out. Again, it's not popping as quickly as it should be because that shield wasn't going down, but it's going down now, and it's dead. So... That's interesting. <laughs> Let's summarize this ship. Can you do better than Drake Cutlass? Yes, Constellation Andromeda. However, for just under 1.4 million in-game, you get a ship that has the potential of four fixed size 3 laser repeaters, a turret with two size 3 laser repeaters, a quantum drive, that can get you, if you upgrade it, all over the system exceptionally fast and do round trips and one-way trips in places. Store vehicles easily inside it. You won't probably get a big rover in it, but you get the smaller vehicles inside it. Can carry tons of people if you're having like a whole crew and you're moving people around. Can carry a tiny bit of cargo. I don't know really a cargo runner. Um, you can do mining in it with the rock miner. This is a good all-round ship and is much more maneuverable than the larger Andromeda, which is probably the stepping stone as I've talked about many times. And you're going to think me mad, but possibly a contender for a daily, drive, <laughs> daily driver for me. I can do bounties on this reasonably quickly. I'm not getting like my two-minute kill times that I would in Andromeda back in 316. But I'm not getting that at all with the Andromeda now because the uh, the forward shield issues that we have, you have to get in and behind targets now to take them out of it if it's if it's really messing up. So that was a deep dive, sort of first look deep dive at the Cutlass Black. It'd be interesting to see what you think. Are you still unconvinced? Or perhaps are you thinking you might rent one and see if you get the same feel for me? I, I'm really starting to enjoy it. It's, it's aesthetic. It's immersive sort of gameplay as that grungy, all-purpose freighter, medium fighter. I don't, is a push, but you, you maybe medium fighter. Let me know what you think in the comments. I want to thank you very much for watching and entertaining my madness a little bit as we look at this older ship and seeing if we can breathe some new life back into it. My name's Brew Crick. You can call me Brew. I hope your week's going well. I hope you've had a great day. And your following days and weeks are amazing as best as they can be. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all 
in the next video. Which will probably be equally as mad. <laughs> Bye everyone. <laughs> Thanks for watching.